situated in the southern part of Malta, this beautiful town called Imabba with 3,000 inhabitants, inhabitants. You're in for a treat because I'm on the hunt for the chapels, four chapels that you find in this beautiful town. Now, I've got notes, a lot of notes here to share with you. So join me in this journey here in the beautiful town, old town of Mabba. Let's go. Now, as you can see, the village is preparing for the feast 15th of August. Check out all the decorations starting and the statues all over the balconies with the flags. Check this out. So it's all prepared. Look, all these streets, this is how they do it. So the motto of this, of this village is non nisi per ardua, which means only with ability and it's a rich the rich history rich culture of this amazing small village as you can see while we're on the hunt for the chapels check out the main one of the main churches here a lot of people sitting down siestas already barricaded the street the main square here fighting with So behind me you have the main parish church, the St. Mary's Parish Church and it's open so let's see if we can get in inside and there's a nice smell in this bar if it's rabbit or uh, there could be some sauce in the stew the smell is fantastic so take a look at the fantastic decorations really amazing and even narrow streets like this narrow street here i mean the detail that goes here and the dedication of these people young people that maybe you saw behind me it's another level look this must be like a band club surely and this is called the plancheer i don't know in english but this is where the band stands so they're getting ready for the feast check this out look beautiful it is so this is the main church main parish church right there uh, let's see if i can get in i saw it open so let's see if i can get in and show you inside once again this is an old church as well So a lot of people are preparing for uh, maybe there's some events like they do usually. So speakers and uh, things with sound, sound systems that we're gonna install in that area. It's quite a big big uh, area around this, around the church so let's head to the first chapel and i'm gonna tell you more about it uh, this is something that i've never i've never done any videos like this but there are four chapels i'm gonna go for the first one right in here but as you can see busy everyone is busy so excuse me so let's go to the first chapel right here and check it out narrow streets these old towns how, how they are look this must be a little townhouse right there and just like that within a few minutes we are next to the first chapel that i want to share with you some information it's uh, the chapel of uh, lady of sorrow so it's just this is the main uh, one of the main streets that there is the main parish church i just walked a few minutes and in fact the, the street is called Tri Dolur, which is uh, sorrow street perhaps i think in english and look at this i think all of these chapels since this is the the beauty of this is since there's a feast going on i mean coming up i'm shooting this on the 9th of august so on the 15th is the uh, is the feast big feast happening in many many villages 
around the, around the island and also in Gozo but look I don't know if you can see this but it's the Our Lady of Sorrows chapel now this was built uh, in the 1500s so around 1500s and uh, you see it open take, take a look at this well I think you're lucky it's open I'm excited first time look This is one of the first times because I don't want to interrupt the lady that she's praying. So luckily on video, this is my first time that I'm inside one of these old chapels. Like I said, built in the 1500s. So 1500, 00, 1500, it was built. But take a look at this. I'm gonna stand right here and give you some facts. Now, like I said, this is the first chapel so hopefully the others are also open uh, have you seen inside? I mean just inside the affresco I mean unbelievable and it's kept like like a mint condition look look the condition and in fact they they have re re renovated this for sure uh, not, not so long ago now let me give you some facts so between 1592 and 1593 Malta in fact was hit by this deadly plague we call it Pesta and in here this is the church churchyard here they uh, unfortunately over around 4,000 people have uh, died in Malta around that time and some of them have been buried here all right so it's kind of the graveyard in here there's nothing written here but if you do your research like I did I uh, spent a lot of time doing some research for you guys uh, so some of them have been uh, they, they've buried them here so another thing is that in 1679 so 17th century Bishop Geralomo Molina on his visit he saw, he saw that the chapel was small so what he did is he told the uh, priests two of the priests uh, that uh, they were uh, running things in here and what happened is they, they uh, just demolished the small chapel and then what they did is they rebuilt the chapel within a couple of years in fact 1680 so actually one year one year after um, uh, that, that this thing happened they rebuilt it from scratch a bit bigger uh, perhaps I don't know the designs how it was this is pretty small as a chapel as you saw perhaps on the footage uh, but then what happened it was clearly abundant so for 150 years okay uh, nobody took care of it as a matter of fact one of the notes here is 150 years later so we're talking about 1814 Bishop Ferdinando Mattei gave it to, to his successor Dr. Giovanni Schembri that took care of it and that's when they dedicated this to the Lady of Sorrow, Duluri. This is uh, the first stop. So that's my notes on, on uh, this beautiful chapel. Again, so, so, so lucky to get inside. And I think we're going to be lucky also to visit the other two. The other three, actually. So this is the first one, the hunt. The chapel hunt continues. Let's go and check out the rest. As you can see, even the the uh, English English phone box style is also here now look so the council are doing this 
and uh, this was this was uh, refurbished look this project pre-finance so there was a refurbishment going on between 2007 and 2013 so this is why you see it in the mint condition right here wow all right off we go to second location take a look at this i wanted to see i wanted you to see beauty take a look at this maybe i use this as a thumbnail so take a look at these amazing narrow streets people doing voluntary work you know these young people who are who, who put up all these full stool these lights imagine in the evening the atmosphere here and look all these statues around there's some shop here but mostly bars people living here as well so the second one that i want to show you is the saint catherine's so saint catherine's is another story so imagine it's a few meters away look i just arrived at the main parish so main parish church saint mary's church now we're gonna go to the saint catherine's which is, which is around here so let's see if we can find it i think i spotted it there you go it must be it so this is it this is the saint catherine's chapel right here this was built in 1550 but the interesting thing so it's closed so it's not open like the other one but anyway so check this out now this amazing chapel right here next to it so it was built 1550 but next to it actually hopefully i think it was this one and now you find a, like a house people live here so there was saint peter chapel so what they did is in 1759 okay 1759 what they did is they decided to demolish both chapels and build one and chose saint catherine's as the name for chapel now the other other interesting fact is that nowadays i know and you wonder why it's closed and the other perhaps it's open and gordon you said it's the feast it's because nowadays unfortunately they are using this as a storage 1765 was uh, finally built okay into one uh, like i said and one notable fact is that during my research and i have my notes here like i said because i cannot remember all the dates guys you need to be patient with me but it's good to know you know good, good to know some history rich history look how close it is to the main church it's just a few meters away so what they did is aesthetically aesthetically you see this as a square from the outside so that's the difference between all the other chapels uh, around here and also perhaps around the, the country as well so it's a rectangular or square in shape aesthetically outside inside they said it's round so it's roundish that's one of the aesthetical thing but like i said nowadays uh, although they restored it like 2007 as well because i think what they did is they restored in 2007 until 2013 they got funded by you so they restored all these chapels uh, that i'm hunting for i'm visiting right here in Mabba. Uh, because look you see these plagues that said the uh, restore which is restoration of Santa Catarina chapel so that happened as well and as you can see uh, St. Catherine's chapel right there in fact 1761 the new newly built um, started so first stone 1761-1764 was ready done on the site of two former chapels like i said you see the decade of saint peter and saint catherine so the research was spot on now i'm gonna take you to the uh, last two why last two because the last two are together and uh, there's some interesting facts and history for that so we're gonna take you there and uh, show you uh, which two chapels left we have on our list so let's go and tick them off. There must be something today because the police are very active telling people to remove their cars and things like that. So, well, this is the beauty coming here uh, around this time, you know. So we found the church open 
one of the few things as you probably saw the other videos and we saw one chapel open the other one is a user storage now we're gonna have uh, we have two more chapels to go having the looks of the locals and telling this guy is crazy with the camera what he's doing but anyhow we must soldier on and uh, find for you the last two chapels and uh, tell you all about the history Signor Al Cappella ta San San Basilio o ta Merc menau nek menau a Berkini se odi ketri fe ol gazino eh eh amen amek on inzellau ma yo tre wahda bir all right all right el festa tai ba shan to el festa fil 15 su fil 15 ma dal fresk dai e pala importante la anda gal fresk che shem che skiddekta eh e le to ta men dai ma كم تربا وصابي هكا نيت فيرا انسرتايت انسرتايت لي او الفيستا تاع سانتا ماريا و استرا او نك مارو فينا النار وشك تستاهل لي انا اتنيو او نك شني سانتا ماريا ولا هرش لي الفيستا كالجيليو هذيك جاديت يا جاديت ال 15 15 Mena, ere, mena, kif tajid li inti, mena. Grazzi, xenile, grazzi, il-fessi għattaj, pa sinjura. Ta, ciao, hi, ciao, ciao, ciao. That was lovely conversation with the lady that she's been living here all her life, she said, and that's all her kids live around here. So that shows that people really love living and staying here. I don't blame them. Because although there are old townhouses and old buildings, but also there's the new new apartments and new building popping as well. So she told me that the uh, I was going the wrong way actually, because I was going this way. She told me that the uh, last two chapels are on this side. So let's go. So the next one, the third one, third chapel. We just arrived. Look at this. Saint Basil right there. So the lady was right. I was going to the wrong direction. I mean, I cannot not follow the old lady's suggestion. She knows this town by heart. Even if she's blindfolded. So look. They are closed. Let's see. Yeah, it's closed, look. Fortunately, it's closed. But anyhow, let me just tell you some facts about this. The first one on the left, okay? So on the left is the Saint Basil. So some Basilio, Basilio in Maltese. So Saint Basil, Saint Basil, Saint Basil Chapel in English. Now, this is, this is a treasure chapel for Abba. Why? Because it's uh, how, how old it is. I mean, take a look at this how old it is because it has a Norman architecture as you can see it's very very different from the previous ones that I showed you there's a unique dedication to the saint in Malta so Saint Basil you cannot find you cannot find any any other chapels like perhaps the Lady of Sorrow which there's a lot or Saint Catherine's chapels or churches so on the island this is the only one Saint Basil dedicated to Saint Basil now also okay also this was served to note it was served as a parish church of Abba for some years before they built the, the main one now another fact this is huge fact they said that this saint basil chapel was already here was it was already built in 1486 or prior to 1486 the, the reason being is because they found um, uh, they found traces perhaps that uh, indicates that this church actual chapel was built prior to the date 1486 I mean that's crazy as you see here 15th century 16th century beginning of 16th century this is why this is I mean we need to treasure these kind of chapels in my opinion so let me know if you know or if you knew about this this uh, these chapels so far what happened in uh, 1515 so similar to the other 
uh, chapel right there. What happened is they uh, enlarged it. So 1515, they decided to make it bigger. Another thing that happened, you see, through all these years, like hundreds and hundreds of years, what happened is that in 9th of August, 1942, in fact, it's the 9th of August while I'm filming this. Crazy, crazy combination, okay? Crazy coincidence, actually. So 9th of August, 1942, during the World War, Second World War, right? As you might know that Malta was heavily hit, during an air raid, hit the main church and hit also this chapel. But miraculously, although it was hit, the roof was hit, they said. The roof was, was hit by uh, an air raid early morning, but it did not collapse. So uh, that's a story to tell that this chapel has seen also uh, maybe not as big as the Mosta church where the uh, you can still find the big bomb uh, which didn't explode there was a mass probably you know the story maybe I do a video when I go there let me know if you want me to go and uh, do a video around the uh, Mosta and about the Mosta church and what happened but this was one of also the uh, the affected from the war and air raids that happened in 1942 9th of August the same date same month 9th august that i'm shooting this video for you guys i'm gonna go to the last one which is the one next to it which is dedicated to saint michael archangel the interesting thing although you cannot see it but like i said when i was doing the research uh, there is a door on the side okay although there is the main doors as you can see behind me but on the side there's a there's a door that you can go from one to another which is pretty uh, interesting to see and I've never seen probably is the is the only one in Malta I'm not sure uh, to see two chapels I mean next to each other like the one back then it was with St. Catherine and St. Peter's but now it's one so this is something unique you can see like a view you can see that two chapels together two different chapels together uh, with uh, with on the side you can uh, go from one to another now you can find probably i find some pictures and put them while i'm editing this take a look not just the history but also what's inside not just the building itself but also what's inside oh i mean you're not gonna find everything because some pieces might be stolen like i've read as well this is another fact in here the the in uh, which which is the churchyard here you remember i told you about the uh, the uh, deadly plague, the Pesta, in uh, 1675. Some people, they are buried also in here. So I think there was this uh, this thing back in the days. There's a lot of cars passing by. So, there's, so there's a, there, there was a thing, like it's a pattern, like I'm seeing. You probably are seeing as well that during this uh, bad uh, pandemic, back in the day as well the deadly plague the pesta they uh, had this uh, habit perhaps to bury people in the churchyard so you find them here you find them as well uh, where we took where i took you the first one the lady of sorrow and uh, maybe in the other in the others as well in the other i mean chapels as well so that's an interesting fact that i I see, I'm seeing a pattern as well, and probably you do as well. So uh, last thing is, uh, the, the, it was built in 1550, but in 1669 it was rebuilt again. So similar to uh, the one next to it. And the, the devotion to St. Michael the Archangel in Abba is huge, with three statues of him dispersed around this town. So probably, uh, maybe one of them could be this one. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of statues. Uh, in here not just flags and beautiful decorations for the feast so uh, again it was restored also 2007 so huge kudos huge kudos to uh, those who worked on this 2007 till 2013 thanks to the funding they did that they got they managed to restore also the third okay and fourth alongside the first one and second one that i showed you these chapels in the beautiful Mabba. Wow, and that was a lot, I know, but uh, 
the hunt, the chapel hunt, maybe that's the title of the video, is coming to an end. So I'm gonna go and uh, get something to drink and chill for a couple of uh, hours or an hour before I head uh, back home. Take a look at the main church, main parish church right there. The old building here. Narrow streets, cars all over. As you can see, a lot of street cats here. I was talking with the guy, probably I put it in the video, that the feast starts today, so it's whole week. So from the 9th till 15th, they told me there's the there's mass, there's the band playing, the events are starting in a few hours. So having said that, I'm gonna wrap up this video from the square of an Abba. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you found this uh, something interesting for you. Maybe I'm gonna do this in the, another town or another village in Malta or Gozo. Signing off. Take care, guys. Peace.